Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Four countries, three great varieties, uh, hopefully one terrific tasting. Uh, the reason I've done it, doing it like this, it, it, I suppose it's a bit of a mishmash, but um, there weren't enough bottles sitting there waiting to be tasting to do a full tasting of Malbec or of Carmenere or of Cabernet Sauvignon. So I've dumped them all together and let's see how we get on. France first, Valle Blanche Malbec, uh, Pédoc 2010 from Alain Grignon. Now the main place for Malbec in, in, uh, in southern France is the southwest, or in uh, Cowboys, the uh, Malbec country in, uh, down there. But this is Paydoc, so we're a bit further, um, further to, to the uh, east, I had to remember that then. Uh, and it uh, feels like it's going to be a warmer, fatter, fuller style than typical for, uh, for Cowboy. Cowboy can be a little bit of a butter clencher and uh, uh, lots of fruit flavour, lots of perfume, but uh, also quite a bit of tanny. This feels like it's going to be softer, more plummy, uh, maybe not as um, aristocratic, and there's something like a slightly muddy vanilla hint here, but maybe a bit more of a crowd pleaser. Let's see. It does have some softness and spice, and it does have that little bit of fragrance. Um, for me, it slightly misses out on the Malbec uh, uh, sveltness, and there's, as I say, this vanilla character just making me think that um, somebody has um, tried to tart it up and make it a little bit more user-friendly with, um, uh, with oak of some sort. I don't know whether they're, they're using chips or staves here or, or whether it's barrels, but there is this vanilla edge which takes away from the purity of the fruit, making, a, yes, a rounder wine, but maybe not as interesting a wine. But decent enough. Chile, um, Carmen Air, uh, 2010, Carmen Reserva, from Colchagua. And typical Carmen Air, it's got those quite round, rich red berry uh, and black berry type of uh, aromas, uh, with a little bit of spice and some of this greenness. Some people call it green beans, some people talk about coffee beans, it's certainly got that. Some people talk, they talk about hoisin sauce, I don't get quite that exotic edge here. Feels like it's... Um, uh, it's, it's going to have this rich flavour. Uh, the problem with Carmenere, it's quite low in acidity, so if you do it by itself, uh, you need uh, almost uh, to, to add something, uh, maybe some acidity or maybe a little proportion of a few other uh, more firmer grape varieties to give it uh, some sternness and backbone. Feels like they've done something like that here. Can't, doesn't say on there what they've, uh, whether they've put any other varieties in, but they're perfectly entitled to stick Carmenere on there and uh, stick 15% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon on there without revealing so on the label. I that's a bit curate's egg for me. Um, I like the uh, the juiciness of the fruit. It's got these red berries. It's got some darker berry edges, and it's got this spice in there. Uh, but then there's this slightly gloopy, softer side. So the sum of it, uh, maybe a little bit of that hoisting character, something almost like honey, um, honey and vanilla, which are uh, they are there. A little bit of them would be good, but I find uh, that they're almost making the wine just a little bit too soft, just a little bit too. Um, lift music type of character. Um, it's it's okay, um, and uh, I I don't know, Carmen is one of those great varieties that I, I like as part of a blend by itself. I think it, it, I think for me it needs bolstering, and um, I, I like to see that bolstering with quite a bit more Cabernet Sauvignon. But that's just me. Speaking of Cabernet Sauvignon, two wines, two, two Cabernets. Now, first one is Hahn uh, Cabernet Sauvignon Central Coast in California and uh, 2008 vintage. Well, there's a rich, rounded, slightly, ever so slightly baked berry character here. Um, baked is not a word that I like to use uh, for, for red wines, but here it, it, there's, it, it's weird. There's like a, a, an overripe bit, but a fresh bit too. And it doesn't feel like either of them is too dominant. Um, it, it feels like it's going to be quite round and generous, not too complex. Um, I don't notice too much character that is soil related. It seems to be all great variety and wine making, but it smells like it's going to be an honest drink. It's okay. Yes, I, I maybe if I were to criticise it, um, it's a bit simple. Um, it seems to be uh, all about the grape variety and the wine making. And as I say, there's, there's this bit that's uh, slightly on the overripe side, and there's this bit that's slightly green that's giving it a, a little bit of hardness on the finish. But as affordable Cabernet Sauvignon goes from uh, California, um, I can't think of too many things that are better. Um, so honest, round, ruddy, and uh, bring me a steak and I'd probably drink quite a bit of it. Let's see whether I can say the same of Vechelechen, uh, 2005 Cabernet Sauvignon from Stellenbosch. Yes, it's Stellenbosch in South Africa. 
seven years old and smells like it's maturing rather nicely. Uh, there's a fresh bit, um, so it, it feels like there's still quite a lot of life and power in the fruit. Uh, but there's also this leafy tobacco and, um, yeah, tobacco leaf and blackcurrant leaf complexity. Um, it feels like a wine that um, is, yeah, it still has quite a lot of de development ahead of it. Uh, but uh, there's... I, sometimes the, the, the South African smoky edge really disturbs me in a wine. Here, it's ever so slightly there, and it's just in the background, and it's not dominating the wine, and I think it works, it works pretty well. It smells like it's going to be quite a classy style. I like that. It's got a, a juiciness, and it's got this plumminess. It's weird. I mean, just thinking about uh, comparisons with other regions, uh, it's got a, almost like a Pomerol-type plumminess. And I know Pomerol's made from mostly from Merlot, but uh, I often find that with uh, some Cabernet Sauvignons from uh, cooler bits of warm regions. So Cunoir, I, I often find that mature Cunoir Cabernet develops this um, Pomerol-like plumminess. So there's that, uh, these leafy edges there, and there's, that's, as I say, that South African bake is way in the background rather than taking centre stage, and it's adding complexity rather than dominating the wine. Um, I do like that, and I, I can't remember what I'm eating uh, this evening, but but uh, if it's uh, if it's red meaty, that would be absolutely perfect. And um, I'll yeah, rare steak, something like that. Uh, and if it's not, maybe I'll go out and buy some now. But hey, I enjoyed it. See you soon.